I'm curly. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at that mole. That is disgusting. Oh, that's disgusting. Ooh. Does that excite you as much as it excites me? Look at how young my dad looks. Wow. You never know what you're going to get into, and that's why I love my job. All right, we are going way back today to homes in New Orleans. So I was 19, I actually turned 19 in New Orleans. You know what's great about that? Legal drinking age in Canada is 19. Legal drinking age in the States is 21. So, couldn't celebrate my 19th birthday, so that's cool. But I did buy my first house while I was in New Orleans. Long story anyway, we won't talk about that today. Homes in New Orleans, we're gonna go through the video. We're gonna talk about some really cool stuff and uh, take a trip down memory lane once again. So here we go. It's a four bedroom for Gloria and her grandchildren. Wow. Look at Sherry Shall with be pilot? That'd be great, man. Shall so yeah, thank pilot. you. Awesome. Pilot. Okay. The target date obviously is the hurricane three years later. If we can get it done and get them back, it's almost like an anniversary, a sad anniversary, but a reason. And it's good enough for me. Look how young he is. Can you feel it? Don't quit, time? soldier! <laughs> oh, he got an easy screw. Oh, come on. Okay, so this, we actually had to ship our tools down to New Orleans by train. So we shipped them in, uh, I think, two separate crates. We all got our tools together, put them in the crates, screwed it shut, and then forgot that we screwed it shut. And when we got down to New Orleans, the only thing we had was a screwdriver to unscrew three inch screws out of wood. So we made a little game out of it, because what else do you do when you run into a problem? Come on, I can see that one. I use my wrist a lot. In the tank top. Always rocking the tank top back in the day. <laughs> Kate, Pinky, we got the whole, whole gang together. No more sandals. Eighty degrees. So I think that was probably one of the cooler days. It got up to, I want to say like forty degrees Celsius. And if you're in the stage watching this, it got over hundred degrees Fahrenheit easily. We're just here at seven o'clock in the morning. How hot it is out there, you know? I checked the uh, weather this morning. It's supposed to thunderstorm for the next seven days. I mean, I expected it to be hot, but it's the humidity that gets me. Wow. Can we take a second? And just look at this guy. How young, how tall my hair was. I mean, sometimes it's still tall, but so young. Like even on a, on a cloudy day, it's like 90 degrees. Can I also talk about how hot it was in New Orleans and the fact that I burn in the rain? I'm very fair skin. My wife calls me a big bag of milk. So I got heat stroke like every other day. I was... Physically and mentally exhausted. I was miserable to be honest just because I was like I was so tired that You know someone would say something small to me and I'd snap at it and it wouldn't even be something offensive or anything I just that's how tired I was and uh, Like I just w wake up every morning. Okay, so we would get up at like 7 a.m Actually, no, we'd start work at 6 30 or 7 a.m. I uh, would get up really early and then we'd work until about probably seven at night, sometimes later, it varied, but this was the toughest job I think I've ever done. Hot days, crazy amounts of labor, crazy amounts of work, and you're in close quarters with a lot of these people. So what we were talking about there is just, I lost my cool. I actually, I got heat stroke. I ended up taking some time off because I was exhausted. I was tired of everyone. I was fighting with my dad. I was fighting with the crew. I was just frustrated with a lot of people. I know, it's okay, bud. It, it actually did work itself out. Caicos was a little concerned, but we worked it out. Uh, I was exhausted. And the point is, is that when you're in those kind of close quarters with people, I know, it's intense, Caicos. He's whining, so I gotta keep him cool. Um, you lose your cool. And add heat into that, add stress into that, add a 19 year old kid who was filled with adrenaline and you know, I was a little more aggressive back in my younger days. Um, yeah, I couldn't really control my temper as well, so. I met a lot of positive people down here that, uh, you know, they don't really look back at the hurricane. They kind of think of it as, you know, that happened, now we gotta improve our society, improve the neighborhood. And I mean, it, it, I think that also helped me get back from my meltdown was, you know, thinking about that, you know, that I need to be here, I need to do this. I need to help make a difference. We also worked seven days a week. Um, but, you know, we were a family. 
and we all work together, we support each other. The hours sometimes get to you, like especially after like a long day from like seven to nine at night. You really like the next day you're, I feel like a zombie anyway. Man, I complained a lot, didn't I? The way they are built, so strong, and everything measured. It's gotta be precise. She would sit there on her porch swing and just chill out in the morning. We'd all be working. Uh, it's so cool looking back thinking about this. Man, it's hot. Every day it would rain like a monsoon downpour. Not that I know what a monsoon is like, but I imagine it's like similar to this for like an hour. And then the humidity would just spike even higher than it already was. But Okay, before this starts, this, our construction coordinator at the time, Andrew Wood, great guy, we thought he's working in an air conditioned trailer at the time, which is, listen, we all had our jobs. His was to keep the project going, make sure all the drawings were there, make sure we have everything we need. We thought one day, okay, we're in the mud. Let's rough him up in the mud in a fun, friendly way. It got a little out of hand. He lost his wedding band. And I think we ended up buying him a new one, but you can watch and see for yourself what happened. Oh, I kind of saw it coming as a bit of an odd collection of people asking me to stand in on the sort of end of day discussion. And I looked at everyone in the eye. I could see it in a few of them, but they couldn't quite hold it back. I sit in the office all day. And no one really get that dirty. Till today. Back to work, guys. Poor kid. Issues with HVAC or, or any other pressures that are coming in, we're gonna have to make changes. And right now we have 14 days left. In reality, we have 13. Because we're- Oh, not I forgot about Rusty. So the woman sitting to the left of my dad, her name, I think, I think her name was Rusty, if I remember correctly. She actually lost her house in Hurricane Katrina and she was working with us and, uh, and helped us complete this house in time for the third year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. So it was really cool to have someone who actually was Know, affected by Hurricane Katrina, work on this project with us. And on the 29th, we're giving it back. Baby when shit. we heard hey, we had Billy. to work seven days. Billy Bell. It was kind of, I guess it was a bit of a bummer because we haven't got a chance to do a lot of different things here because we, we, we do work a lot. So we're going to miss out on it. This was also Sherry's very first job on the crew. So she flew up to New Orleans, never did a day of construction in her life until homes in New Orleans. I think she was 21. I taught her how to read a tape measure. She might not tell you that, but I know it true. And uh, yeah, this was her first job. Iraq, we're rerouting wires, our cords right now, plus everybody from outside to inside, so. Hold on. Scroll back. This drywall, these guys were insane. We had a vaulted ceiling inside. They drywalled this house so quickly, I can't remember. I think they were from out west and they came down to New Orleans. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina and they opened up a company, a drywall company, started working down here. They were so talented, worked so hard and so quick. I have never seen drywallers throw a house together this quick with, with as many complicated cuts and angles like that. So kudos to this bearded guy here. I can do what I have to do, so it's different, but I kind of expected it when I got myself into this, so. And we're gonna go home, change, come back. Sure, this drywall. We're gonna party one last time in New Orleans, and that's yeah. tonight, okay? Yeah. I love you guys. So what if I had known how difficult it would have been, or all the hurdles we'd run up against, it would probably seem too daunting. Brad Pitt didn't get to meet him, or Angelina. My dad did, but uh, we partnered with Brad and Angelina uh, for the Make It Right Foundation to do this house. So that was a pretty cool initiative, and to work with them on something so important. I'm even gonna take my boots off. Beautiful. Gloria. Well, I was surprised that my heart got full and the tears rolled down. And that's the answer to my prayer. So Gloria, I believe had, she was taking care of, I think something like seven kids. And she took care of her, I think her children's children, like she had her grandchildren there. She took care of so many people and to be able to rebuild this home for Gloria, put it on stilts so that if the levee did break, if water ever did come through again, 
there's a place for that water to go. So it was so cool to be able to do a build like this for someone so deserving. Every single time we'll all wonder, why are we here? What are we doing? I'm tired, I wanna go home. It's always that moment that you give it back to the family that helps you remember why you came here in the first place. For that reason, I'm now a happy guy. And I'm going home. That is true. We've done a lot of tough jobs. We've had a lot of moments where we're really stressed out. And at the end of the day, when you're reviewing the home and you give it back to the homeowners, they're like, man, that is why we do what we do. Almost brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, actually, sometimes it does. I'm a suck. But we love our job. Being able to do this kind of thing for people and uh, go to New Orleans. I never thought I'd go down to New Orleans, be in the ninth ward where we saw some crazy stuff. I mean, car fires. There was um, someone pulled a gun at a park just down the street. Like This was a dangerous part of New Orleans that we did this job in. And man, was it life changing. I learned so much. Every time I'm having a hard time at work, I always think about if you could do New Orleans, you can do this. So it's cool kind of doing this again, having you all a part of it and going down memory lane together. And that way, you know, I'm not doing it alone. If you catch me tearing up a little bit, that's just real. That's just part of this. So again, you have any videos, pictures, certain episodes you want to talk about, you want to get a little bit more insight, let's talk about it. Email communications at makeitright.ca. Copy the link below, email us. Hopefully we'll hear from you soon.